Good day and welcome to HTMI's podcast. Today we have the pleasure of chatting with Dr. Zini Mathieu from the Dublin Institute of Technology. Dr. Mathieu, a real pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself? But I'm a lecturer in DIT in Dublin Institute of Technology in, in Ireland and I lecture and research primarily in areas of entrepreneurship, uh, regional development and I'm also particularly interested at the moment in gender and tourism. So that's your current research at the moment? It is, yeah. Sounds quite interesting. It is. It's very interesting and it's also something that I think probably isn't being studied enough within tourism so it isn't in the mainstream literature. There isn't a huge amount being written about it so there's loads of gaps and opportunities to try and make people aware that everything right. we do needs to be looked at from a gender perspective. So currently what areas of research has been done? within this area? Well, I suppose there's different strands. There's a whole um, body of research with, which looks at employment um, and inequalities in terms of employment, you know, issues like that women tend to be in the lower levels of hospitality, whereas um, there's often glass ceilings to prevent them getting into higher levels of employment. Um, then there's the whole issue of advertising. Uh, Pritchard and Morgan have written uh, work about how uh, destinations and places can be portrayed in, in gender, gender ways and using, using sexual imagery. Um, also things like travel motivations and consumers experiences can be different depending on what gender you are. Um, so therefore it shows us how it's important for us to understand and to look at consumers and tourists from a gendered perspective. So why do you think gender is so relevant today for hospitality and tourism students? and academics? Mm. Well, I think it's relevant because in our society uh, gender matters because it affects the way we think about things. Men and women think about things differently, they do things differently so therefore we have to be aware of that. From I suppose hospitality students point of view when they're going out into industry and they're going to be working in the industry that they need to be aware that their tourists or their consumers are different depending on their gender and what they're looking for and why they choose to come to that establishment or to that country can have been affected by their gender and their experience so therefore it, it has an influence in the way they do their business. So from your research and your experience, do you think it's on a, a global scale that we often find this gender inequality or is it sort of more related to certain parts of the world? No, I think, the, I think the inequality is everywhere, but I think it, it's different depending, uh, the way we see it might be different in different cultures and different communities. And also the way we accept it as a cultural norm may be different in, in different um, communities and different societies. And also we need to think about how we can look at that inequality in terms of a societal way, or we can even look at it, so the current research I'm doing is within households and to look at the different roles and responsibilities that men and women have. And what I've been looking at is whether the differences that has long been established that there are in, in their home lives whereby women tend to do more of the domestic work and um, to see does that happen when they go on holiday because we talk about holidays as being a, an escapism from right. normality and so well when women go on holidays do they bring those chores, chores with them and what the research is very interesting because it's found well for some women they do do less of those chores but on average it's not that the men are taking over the chores but that they're being shared and some jobs remain predominantly the women so 40 percent of the women for example are still doing most of the cleaning and most of the cooking so we're still seeing those gendered roles even while on holiday and right. um, so so it's quite a fascinating topic mm -hmm. do you think that in today's times within the household you're seeing that men are sharing the responsibilities of the household the children more than as in the past well, I think children is a slightly different issue because I think that yes, men are sharing the role with children um, because more women are working and therefore that children role needs to be shared more be because they're being minded during the day and then it's being shared in, in the spare time. And you can see that very clearly in terms of holidays and home that the minding the children bit continued through through both of, both of those uh, different spaces. Um, I think that, I mean, research still shows that women are doing double roughly the amount of housework that men are doing and that's women who are working away from the home as well as in the home are doing are doing more um, and it's interesting as I say that even on holidays that trend continues. Do you see um, a shift I, mean, I know in Switzerland it's becoming I don't want to say common but it is happening where the woman is going into the workplace 
and the husband is staying at home, mm -hmm. doing the household, the chores, looking after the children. Mm. We're starting to see that in Ireland too, because yeah. with the decline in the economy, especially with construction workers, particularly losing jobs, we're definitely seeing that very clearly. It's going to take time before we see whether the societal trend, to what extent that happens. Um, and also it's interesting to see just, you know, anecdotally, people who talk about that as to, to what extent the home chores, if you like, are being totally undertaken by the man or whether they're being temporarily undertaken and that when the woman walks in the door she, she yeah. regains those roles. And um, again, when we look at the difference between home and holiday, if that's an indicator, then that role still remains very much a woman's role. So what do we, governments, I don't know, need to do to try and promote more um, this gender equality? that we have equality between mm. the two genders. I mean, I, th I think a lot of it actually is awareness, actually, because it was very interesting in, in the paper I was giving at today's conference, HTML conference, um, it was very interesting that the men in the audience were saying, oh, I never thought about that. I never thought about the fact that when we go on holidays, I actually don't do those yeah. jobs. I leave them to my wife. And one person said, you know, my main contribution in the house is I cut the grass. But of course, when we go on holidays, I don't have to cut the grass. Therefore, <laughs> I don't have a job to do. Right. So a lot of it actually is an awareness. Um, and, and what the literature shows as well is, is the importance of the fact that many women actually don't mind the fact that they do more of the jobs, it's the fact that it's recognised that they do more of the jobs and what right. they call in the literature mattering, that if they matter then that's, that's acceptable for them to do more as long as it's recognised and that there are people helping along the way. So I, I think it's, it's an attitude and it's often stopping to actually think about the gender roles and that's not just within households but that's within every aspect of our life and every piece of research and teaching that we do we need to think about well how could we look at this from a gendered perspective. So what would a husband need to do today if the wife is doing more of the work? You mentioned this recognition mm. and mattering. What do we need to do to recognize our wives' roles and the contribution they're making towards the upbringing of kids mm. and looking after the household? Well, I think, for example, we see it in terms of the, the holiday patterns where what we see happening is, is that men share the task. So it's not that they take over the task, but that they do them together. And I think that's an example of the mattering thing, that you both make decisions about what's for dinner and you both go and do the shopping when you're on holidays because it becomes part of the holiday experience and the leisure experience. And I think that's an example of how it can happen. Lastly, do you see perhaps a trend in the future. You know, today, if we look at women entering the business world, mm. you're seeing more and more women. Again, you know, if you look at many management schools, you've seen a huge increase where today you have more females than male students. Uh, women are entering the field, they're having children later, or they're not having children at all. How do you see the trend Mm. I think that unfortunately I'm not, I wouldn't be hugely optimistic about that changing. I think that yes we have much more women um, in, in education but the problem is that when they go in the workplace is that they still have that glass ceiling and we're not seeing that when we start looking at high level managers. Um, and the issues there are among the whole child rearing issue because hospitality is a difficult industry to be in if you also have a family to juggle. Um, and, and that's why we're seeing a lot of women move into other types of entrepreneurship within hospitality and set up their own business because it's possible for them to juggle those two things. So I, I wouldn't be hugely optimistic about that changing, but by the same token, perhaps that's not what all women want anyway, because right. for a lot of women, they get to a level and then they say, I don't really want to do this type of job anymore, I, I want to do something else. So those women that do want to enter the, the hospitality industry, they do want to move up and they do have children. Mm. What should hospitality companies mm. be doing today to help and also to promote you know, women managers. Yeah, and I think it's very important that they do promote that because I think it's very important, again, from a gender perspective, to have a mix in your management team that come from different angles and think about things differently. And, and that's a very strong mm -hmm. skill that the industry is losing currently. Um, I think it's probably around the ideas of flexibility, you know, the idea that it's not that a woman who has children is any less able to work the hours, but it's that flexibility and that awareness of what sorts of hours people are going to have to work. You know, and, and I think that the changing role of men in society mean that increasingly men also have to have that flexibility when they have families because if the wife is also working there's a need for somebody um, to be at home at a certain point in time. Well thank you very much it's been absolutely fascinating talking to you. Thank you very much Dr. Martia. Thanks very much thank, thank you. you.